I'm in SketchUp's layout program detailing the Polk Total Station 2 model and I discovered a problem that I have to run back to SketchUp and fix. And I thought, you know, this would be a great opportunity to show you two powerful tools to do with SketchUp and working with layout. Hey, I'm Ron Polk. Welcome to the Smart Digital Woodshop. So we're going to take a look at the connection of the model in SketchUp to the drawing that we have, the flat drawing that we have here in layout. And we're also going to take a look at the difference in groups and components. So I've jumped back over to SketchUp and this is what you're looking at over in layout, but not all the dimensions on it because that's all done in layout, but it is connected. I wanna show you as I do this, the difference between a group and a component. If I jump over here to the cover shot, you'll see that the bottom of these horses and these support horses are flat. This is a component, which means that, you know, I've got four of these in the plan. And that means that whatever I do to one, it will happen to all the others because it's a component. So I'm gonna come into this component. I'm gonna highlight the whole thing. I'm gonna hit move the M key, hit the option key to get the plus, and I'm gonna copy it. I'm just gonna drag it over, copy it. Then I'm going to explode it. So now, no longer is, even though it's identical and everything about it's the same as this, it's no longer one of the components. This is still a component. This is now just geometry. Because when I click on individual parts, they show up it's not even a group. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna make a group. Groups and components are very, very similar, but there's one big difference. T key for tape measure. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna come in 50, come over here, come in 50. Then I'm gonna come up at the bottom and do uh, 10. I'm gonna type in 10. And that gives me the cutout that I wanna do. So I'm gonna come in and choose this surface and I'm gonna hit the R key for rectangle, click on the intersection, it snaps right in. And you can see that it broke that surface. I'll select the surface. I'm going to hit the P key for push-pull, and I'm going to come down all the way through so I'm, I'm past the bottom here, and you can see that it goes away. Now I'm going to jump over to the cover shot, and voila, nothing has happened. It looks exactly the way it did before. Now we're going to come over and do the same thing. We're going to get into that surface. You notice that I see all the dots. It's highlighted. I'm going to hit the R key for rectangle, grab that, come over here and rotate it a little bit. I'm gonna hit the P key for push pull. I'm gonna select that surface and come down to the bottom until it disappears. So this one I'll do different just to show you there's so many different ways to do things. I could just draw with a line, three lines instead of the rectangle. I'm going, I'm going to take my T key for tape measure. It gives me my guidelines. It's not actually the tape measure. I'm gonna come in here and lock that in there. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm coming in that same 50. Now on the bottom, what I'm gonna do is I could use a rectangle, but I'm just gonna use lines here. Again, just showing you different ways to do things. So I'm hitting the L key for line. I'll come in right where that intersects, come down where that intersects. You can see that it broke that surface. And that tells me that I did it right. If I didn't see it separate there, I know I didn't get it right. So. Now I have this surface, and so now I'm going to take the P key for push-pull. I'm just going to push it up to that same line up there. So if I go back here, you can see that I got the same results using a slightly different method. And then I've already done this one over here. So now let's jump over back to the cover shot. And boom, there they are. So you can see that they're all done. So I've got one, two, three, four, they were all done with the one action. And then one, two was done with the other action because these are components. When we did the group, it didn't change these at all. So that is what a component is. When you have the same thing and you want them to always stay identical, pickets on stairs, the, all the you know fence pickets, just, it, there's just a number of things, studs if you're doing, if you're detailing out framing. And I'm gonna hit file, save. Now, when I jump over to layout, you can see that nothing has changed. So you think, oh, it didn't work. So you see they're both flat, this one and this one. But watch what happens. I'm gonna go into this 
and I got to get it because this is a group that I've created over in layout. Now I'm in the model. I can tell because of the bounding line and what's great. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to update model reference. And of course it's talking to SketchUp. So it takes a few seconds. Boom. Done. So you can see by tying the model in together. Now I can go in and, and detail these properly. So if I jump from here, you see how they show there? I don't have to update this model because it's the same model in layout. So it, it knows that, hey, these, this change is connected to the same model. So that portal, that window in, in all of the windows that I have now throughout all of layout, they've all been changed to reflect the current update. So I can jump back and forth. I hope you find these SketchUp tips helpful. If you like these videos and would like to see more of them, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Most important, share the channel with others. You can also find a link to my Amazon store in the description of the video down below, along with a link to my website where you can find any of the plans that I offer. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.